Welcome back to VATV as we dive into our 1969 Corvette project with some upgrades from Detroit Speed. We took kind of a team approach to tearing this car down. So various systems came apart at the same time. Our assistant Caleb jumped on the conversion project to install some Detroit speed parts, which were designed to make things like the headlights and the windshield wipers more reliable. These cars have hidden headlights, meaning they are attached to doors that open when you turn the headlights on. The original Corvette hidden headlights were vacuum operated, but after a half a century, the vacuum diaphragms and hoses dried out and no longer worked. Well, Detroit Speed has come up with a conversion kit that allows you to install electric motors on those headlights. So now when you turn the headlights on, you're not relying on 50-year-old vacuum lines and vacuum motors to do the work to make those headlight doors pop up. And the conversion is fairly simple. You uh, remove that vacuum motor and install the electric motor in its place and reconnect the linkage so that uh, everything moves fluidly. There is an adjustment procedure to make sure the low and high positions are correct, but it's far more reliable than a vacuum system. One of the reasons why Corvettes are so slick looking is that they hide the windshield wipers underneath a trap door. Once you turn the wipers on, the door flips up and the wipers come out to do their job. But just like the headlights, this door is also vacuum operated and lost its functionality over time. Uh, Detroit Speed also makes an electric uh, wiper door conversion that allows the use of an electric motor to flip that door open. And as well as give you delay wipers so that you can operate the wipers like a new car from a long delay to full on if you need them. Uh, Caleb went ahead and installed that kit as well so that we didn't have to worry about any vacuum accessories on this car. One of the goals for this car is to make it more comfortable to drive, so we're making some upgrades in the driver compartment as well. We're going to add a vintage air air conditioning system, and we're also changing the gauges out from the stock ones to some new gauges uh, by Dakota Digital. The gauge decision is done so that it's easier to read the electronic signals from the new engine and the air conditioning to make it more cool for the driver. In order to do this, we decided to disassemble most of the dash to get all these things out of the way. Uh, the passenger side of the dash came out along with the center console. The radio that came with the car no longer worked, so that came out. Uh, we're going to replace that with a new one from Custom Auto Sound. And then we're going to have to address the transmission tunnel area of this car because we're installing a six-speed manual transmission from Modern Driveline. They supplied us basically the whole package of parts that pertains to transmission. So transmission, flywheel clutch, bell housing, uh, clutch hydraulics, um, brackets for modifying the stock clutch pedal to accept a hydraulic master cylinder. When we started this project, there was not a readily available bolt-in kit to do that conversion. So we're going to work with Modern Driveline to possibly develop a kit or at least some pointers on how to get this much bigger six-speed in the original spot where the four-speed was. So we wanted to clear out as much of the dashboard and console area as we could so that we could do some measurements and figure out how to make this thing fit. Our Corvette came with a manual four-speed transmission, but the new six-speed is a much larger unit in both length and width. So we knew we'd have to modify the transmission tunnel and floor to make it fit. If you compare a C3 Corvette to a late model Corvette, it kind of feels similar when you sit in it. You sit down low, the console's really high, and the reason for that is because of space. Um, in a late model Corvette, the transmission's in the back, but you still have to get from front to back. We used an empty Tremec six-speed case we borrowed from Modern Driveline and a bare LS block to determine what needed to change in the Corvette's transmission tunnel. Uh, we measured the four-speed uh, from bell housing to tail compared to the six-speed from bell housing to tail. Uh, we determined that the first thing we're going to have to do is make our own crossmember. Unlike most cars, the Corvette's transmission crossmember is a non-removable part of the chassis. The team carefully cut it out to start making room for the new transmission. A new crossmember will be made once the driveline angles are determined.
We bolted the QuickTime bell housing to the Tremec T56 Magnum transmission and installed the transmission and drive shaft into the car. Kind of just stuck the transmission up in the hole to see where we were at, and we crept up on cutting the tunnel out until we got transmission sitting in the car uh, with our mock-up locked, get an idea of where this was gonna live. Because of the Corvette's design, you cannot install the drive shaft unless the transmission or rear axle are out of the car. The clutch and pressure plate are attached to the engine and the engine is lowered into place. Uh, one of the first things that I noticed when we set the engine transmission in the car is that originally the drivetrain's crooked in the Corvette. And GM did that on purpose. Driver positioning was, was kind of a, a bigger thing than passenger positioning. So the engine's actually kind of over the passenger side. Uh, but they didn't put the back of the transmission um, centered in the car. So the engine kind of sits at an angle. Uh, so that was one of the things we wanted to correct because we're turning a higher RPM, a higher road speed, and we didn't want to translate a driveline vibration into the car uh, that was a possibility with everything in there crooked. And we had the opportunity since we're going to be cutting up the tunnel and um, remounting the engine and all that. At this point, the driveline angles are established and work continues on the transmission cross member. The original structure is capped and a tubular bolt-in member is fabricated. The transmission mount is bolted to the new cross member to lock it in position. The original floor was showing some signs of stress cracks and wear over time. So the team ended up cutting a bit more of the tunnel away than initially anticipated to get past the ugly sections and to have a smooth area to attach the new tunnel. What ends up happening is you have to cut the floor, but the floor is fiberglass, which makes it a little more difficult. A discussion was had about creating the revised transmission tunnel in steel or fiberglass and it was determined that a glass version would be the way to go. When you're cutting into fiberglass, you have to assess how to properly bond your pieces back in so that it's strong and safe. And then you've got the aesthetics of how the inside of the car, the console doesn't have a lot of extra space in it. So moving the tunnel up uh, creates some challenges there, especially since the owner wanted the interior to look as stock as possible in this car. Working with modern driveline, the V8 team ended up making a mold so that the new tunnel could be replicated for other installations. The V8 crew is itching to build the new fiberglass transmission tunnel. See it happen when we come back.